thank the Lord for us being here this afternoon at Center Hill Missionary Baptist Church. And we're getting ready to have our women's Bible study. And Sister Susan, could you open us up in prayer? Our most precious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the day that you've given us. God, to be with us as we study your word. And give us something that we need. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, our lesson today is The Devil Made Me Do It. I don't know, there was a song, I think, when I was a girl, or maybe it was just a very common saying, The Devil Made Me Do It. Well, we'd all like to believe that our struggles within sin involve only external enemies. I mean, that's the first thing that we like to blame. You know, because we're in the flesh, we're in, we are not elevated yet to the heavenlies so while we're here we have to deal with our own flesh and we are willing to say that Satan is the, vent, is the blame for our sin we might even blame someone else or the whole of the world so long as it's not an external cause so we don't have to take the blame ourselves I know all of us have done that we want to blame a circumstance or, or blame something but we have to face reality about ourselves in Christ and who we are and our frailties. And, you know, we have to know what our frailties are. Uh, that is a, a profession of our faith that we can get help from Jesus Christ. Because if we actually believe that we do not have any frailties and, uh, of the sin coming against us, that's how we get in trouble. Because then we'll say or do the wrong thing. And all of us do that. We get caught off guard when we say or do the wrong thing. All of us. But we have Christ to help us, and then he gives us forgiveness. But it's in re our forgiveness comes in, rec in recognition. Don't you believe that? that our, if we have to recognize it. I mean, how can we get for, uh, forgiveness of sin for something that we don't recognize in our own personal relationship with Jesus Christ? But scripture says the devil will flee if we resist him. Could someone turn uh, and read uh, James 4, 7? Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. And he will flee. We have to resist him. And sometimes it's not easy, you know, especially if it's, I think if it's a thing that has to do with our temper and has really made us mad, or we could say we're aggravated at a certain circumstance. We have to go to prayer about that thing, and we have to open our Bible and get scripture. And I always want to remind all, all of us, and myself as well, that it's very easy to find scripture. Uh, our flesh will tell us, oh, that's so hard to look all that up. Why don't you just go back to the back of your Bible to your concordance, or maybe you're blessed and you have a big concordance. If you don't have one, I encourage you to get one. They're not that expensive, and they're so worth it. And look up those scriptures. It makes it real easy. Um, and our, our struggle with the world and its temptations is tormented by inordinate desires that emanate from within ourselves. All that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life. Could someone read for me 1 John 2.16? Linda's going to go ahead. Let Linda reread it so others that are listening can go ahead and uh, hear the scripture. It's very beautiful. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. We have to be careful what we get involved in. And it's very easy in this day and hour to get captivated in things that are so big because there's so many things that are in the world that are big. I mean, even for our children, there's talent shows, and uh, there's the music industry, and there's Facebook, and there's things on the internet that kids can do that they think that it's funny and they can get attention, and some young people do make millions of dollars doing that, and there's ways to make money on Facebook, too, like you get so many hits, so many people look at something that you put up, 
and then uh, there's a way of making money in that. I don't know how to do it, but I'm just saying we have to be very careful about our children and that they're not so wrapped up in the world. And I know we talk about that every week because we want to protect our children, protect our grandchildren. So, but not only that, for ourselves, there are things in our world. Uh, we have to be careful about clothes. You know, all of us like clothes, but we have to be careful. You know, because there is, and there's, there's nothing wrong with having nice clothes or having nice outfit if you can. But you just have to be careful of the pride of life, because there's a pride, there's a pride in life of life. I've actually talked to Sister Kim about that a long time ago when I first came here to Jonesboro, and uh, being a pastor's wife and I'm being in ministry and traveling, I've seen that quite a bit in church work. Uh, so it's not just that it's uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord bringing that in to the church. Because the church, we have to stay humble and, and loving and kind, you know, and we all know those things, but we have to be reminded, don't we, to really be reminded if someone is coming into the church, you know, and they're a millionaire. And uh, we think, well, they might do this or they might do that, but not always are those things God's will. God does plant millionaires in his churches, thank God. And there are ones that are humble that do work uh, in the ministry of Jesus Christ. So that's a wonderful thing. We just have to be careful of the pride of life, and they do too, as we're working in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because not everything is God's will. We think, we might think, oh, that's so good. That's like to be God's will, you know. I've been there myself. I mean, that new furniture, that must be God's will. <laughs> that new car, that must be God's will. You know, there's so many things um, that we want to do or that we would want to have while we're here on the planet. You know, and sometimes uh, the Lord, in many times, the Lord does bless us with many things, but we have to be careful that we're staying in the throne. I think the most important thing is to pray about everything, and then we'll know. And, and kind of like look at the pic, uh, the future. You know, what is this going to do to me? What's this going to do to my finances? You know, new furniture might be nice, but what's a payment going to be on that if you're not paying it out right? Because the Lord doesn't want us having accumulated debts. You know, we get debts, all of us, while we're here on this planet, but we've got to get rid of them as fast as we can because He doesn't want us having accumulated debts. Well, if you look at the future, He doesn't want us having that uh, for our future. Because as we're getting older, we need to be freed up, you know. So I could, uh, I can think of so many things, you know, even for myself as I was younger. Uh, Steve and I, we hadn't been married very long. And uh, being married to him, that was an exciting thing for me. <laughs> so we we went and got new furniture, you know. And then three months later, he was called to Detroit. Now, we were in Arizona at the time. And I'm talking to you like 30 years ago, so not recent. <laughs> so when he was called to Detroit, well, we flew out, and then when we came back, well, we were just spurred on about the gospel. And uh, we had this uh, new furniture, <laughs> but we needed money, and it was paid for. So we sold it, and we sold everything just about to go ahead and get the money, get the church fired up. And, um, and I thought about that because I learned lessons. And I like to take everything in my life and look at it as a lesson. And I think that if we do that and we can look at something that was just, it didn't turn out quite the way that we thought it would, well, if we won't be grieved at that or we won't be upset at that, but we will look at it as a lesson. But I thank the Lord, and I did that last night, for the ones in our families that have prayed to get us to where we are today. Because we are here today because of prayer. Who knows? If you didn't have anybody pray for you at all, there are ones that are in the kingdom with that. But maybe it was somebody in the grocery store that you didn't know that went ahead and prayed for you. And somebody prayed for you along the way. Maybe someone didn't get a chance to testify to you but they went ahead and they prayed for you while you were standing in the grocery store. We don't know all the prayers, but I know the prayers of the saints that have been in my life, and I count them with such joy. 
Chris and Jackie Mills weren't, I think, 27 years. Yeah, they supported Gospel of Deliverance, which was Wings of Love prior to that. And I thank them for their support. And Rick and Rhonda Cornell, which are Steve's aunt and uncle, uncle and aunt, the support. I'm not just talking about finances, but the love and the prayer. And there are many others that have prayed with us throughout the ages. And sometimes we don't realize what we've got until it's too late. You know, my mother-in-law, Ruth, she was always there. Every single thing I did, she was there in church work. And great support. And my mom was that way. My mom was the supporter. And she was actually a pillar in the church. They called her a pillar because she loved to raise finances. If she saw something in the church that needed fixed, you know, like we need the doors fixed here in the church. There's a lot of doors. Well, she would say, well, I put $100 toward fixing all the doors in the church. How many in the church would like to go ahead and put some money toward that? Maybe you feel led to put $100. She was great at raising money. You know, even when we had, we had a pie walk where all the sisters in the church and some of the men, they made baked goods and we did a pie walk. And they raised money for the church by doing this, these pies and these baked goods. And my mom would raise hundreds. And my mom, mom was good at that. And you have to stay within your calling that you have. But you that are here, I love you. And you have supported Center Hill. And you've given me the option to go on, you know, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So believe this, I dearly love you. And for those that are not here, uh, that support Steve and I in word, in prayer, or in finances, I love you. And I appreciate what you do for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, in other words, we ourselves are to blame when inordinate worldly affections crowd out what should be a pure love for God and the things of God. And in this world, there are many enticing things, many things that we can spend money on, many things that we can do. But when we put the gospel of Jesus Christ first, we will have no regrets as we lay on our deathbed and we die well to go on and be with the Lord. And that's hard work. And we do that for the future generations. What Steve and I do, Pastor Steve and I do here at this church, and what you do here at this church, what Sister Linda does at Laredo, that is for not the now. That is for the future. That is for the children. That is for the pastors that's going to come in after Steve and I. Because Steve and I are older. And so we look forward to the couple that the Lord might bring and establishing this church that it would be a wonderful, beautiful church to where when the, the Lord does send in the next pastor, that he will be happy and be blessed and the congregation will love him and that there will be no downers because there should be no downers in the work of God. And as we're fo focusing more on the ministry of Jesus Christ, uh, because the, world, the devil is of the world, and he, could, he can ever take advantage of us in our own flesh. Uh, we cannot escape our own guilt by blaming others. We cannot blame anyone else. For the things that I have done in my life, I cannot blame anyone else for what I've done. Nope. And you cannot blame anyone. You have to come with a fact of who you are in Jesus Christ and know those are the personal things that you need to be working on. It's actually good to make a, a list. And some of them are things that can lead you in a bad uh, way. Oh, well, an easy one is to say food. You know, I love food. Everybody loves food. You know, everybody I know in Arkansas loves food. It's <laughs> major in Arizona. <laughs> if I was in Arizona, uh, they're health conscious, so they love their health. And their bodies, a lot of them do, <laughs> more than food. And you will see that in the population. When you're in Arkansas, you'll see a lot of people, they like that biscuits and gravy and fried foods. <laughs> and it was like that when we were in England. We like chips, which is French fries. We call it chips. People put chips. But we have to 
know what our weakness is. Let's say our weakness is food. Well, we have to be careful that we don't spend too much money on food that we love. We have to spend time praying about that and giving money to the church, tithe and offering, and time of all tithe and offering of our time as well. Sister Peggy, uh, when she was here one night, she said, we should pay tithe on our time. She said, I've studied about that. And it is true. We have to get alone with the Lord. We have to pray. That's part of our ties with the Lord. And we have to get alone with Him and pray. And we have to get alone with Him and read our Bible. And we have to get alone with the Lord in our homes and in our prayer closets, praying for one another and taking care of our family. And that's hard work. Taking care of our family is hard work, but we have to do it. Okay, so we can't blame others. And being a Christian is hard work. I, I would never tell anyone that being a Christian isn't hard work. Being a Christian is the hardest work you're ever going to do in your life. It's harder than when I worked as a nursing assistant and I was young. Uh, there was times I went to work in a nursing home. They only had like myself and one other girl. One time I showed up and there were 68 patients. And they didn't have anybody there except for me. And then some came in a couple hours later because nobody wanted to do that labor of work uh, in a nursing home. So I looked at that job and said, okay, well, I have to do this. You know, and there have been, these people need ice water. <laughs> these people need changed. There are things that you have to do when you're in a job, and those things are hard to do. But none of those jobs that we have ever done are as hard as what we're going to work in the gospel of Jesus Christ when we mean business. We have to get up every day, and we have to be nice. And I had a sister in the Lord. She's probably listening. But when she would get up in the morning, she was grouchy until she got her coffee. She knew with nobody touching her or talking to her. She used to sit on the steps in my house, and she came to help Pastor Steve and I. We were doing a paper delivery at that time. We had a, a paper business. And so she comes, she wanted to help, and she meant it. But unfortunately for her, she didn't really get within her wits until after she had her coffee, or at least it was later in the morning. And this was early, and she was grouchy. And Steve talked to her about her grouchiness. <laughs> we have to know who we are, and we have to work. And if we're grouchy in the morning, we gotta figure it out. Is, is, is that coffee really going to make me happy? Or isn't that something deeper inside of me that I've got to get straightened out between me and the Lord? But thankful, if we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. And he does cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And thank the Lord he does. Because if we can just look at it, we have a lot of isms and schisms and the little foxes that folk spoil the vines and uh, sometimes we will go by first impression I was talking to a sister in the Lord about that yesterday evening and she was saying about her first impression and she, knew, and she knew that that first impression wasn't right and I was glad to hear that confession from her because we can't go by that and uh, so anyway let's read 1 John 1 9 somebody will read that Whoever wants to read it, grab that microphone, will you please, so we can hear you. My little sister Linda has the microphone. Dear love, let us be in the light and have this love which makes us love and we ought to be in love. Okay. Amen. We can't have any darkness. We have to have the light. We have that through Jesus Christ. The world is dark. The things of the world are dark. And we have to be careful of all the things by looking at ourselves through the uh, microscope. <laughs> and looking at the world through a microscope. What, what, what is this in you? You know? I was thinking about kids' sports because I know Stephen's coming here. And I, my grandson, you know, he's, so, he's involved in sports. But we have to be very careful that those sports don't interfere with church services. And see, nowadays, a lot of the sports involve, uh, they take away from the church services. There's a lot of things that kids can do that kids can get involved in. I know in Arizona, I had a friend of mine, 
and her voice, she just continued to drool a little bit where they go from one event to the next event to the next event. And her daughter is the same way. And then they have dinner really super fast and they've got their homework and it's like a worldly routine. We've got to slow down. How can we do that? We do that through prayer and just slowing it all down. And they have to just stop it all for a day or two so we can get a handle on things and things not be so fast. God's work is the most important thing that we'll ever do. So what have you found to be the most effective strategies for resisting the devil? It's the mic's there, so I'd like to hear you. If you have something to say, say it on mic. What have you found to be the most effective strategies for resisting the devil? There you go, Linda. Bleeding the blood. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anybody else? How can a person put to death carnal desires such as sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetedness? And that's in, if you want to read that, that's in Colossians 3 5. Somebody will read that. Colossians 3 5. And then we'll discuss it. How can a person put to death? You know, we have an editing machine on our TV. So Pastor Steve's always made sure that we have anything we watch is edited. There's no profanity, no Lord's name in vain in our home. Uh, years ago, there was a funny movie put out. I don't know how much of it we watched it, but it was Weekend at Bernie's, I think. It's about a dead man, and they carry him around. We, unfortunately for us, we are alive, but we are carrying a dead man around. We've got to get rid of it. We have to shed it. But it, it, it won't completely die. Unlike in that movie, that was a dead man. They carried him around and made him look like that he was lost. Sat him up and everything. Actually, that's a good thought because that's what we do when we practice sin when we're a Christian. We're picking that dead thing up. And we're, we're pretending it's alive because it is alive at that moment because we're, we're, we're being used of it. And we can be used of our flesh very easily. Go ahead and read that, someone. First, uh, I mean, Colossians 3, 5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fortification, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil conception, and covetedness, which are idolatry. Uh -huh. Well, I know being a woman, uh -uh. believe it or not, there no matter what you may think of yourself, there are men out there that are attracted to women. Thank God for that. We don't want men attracted to men. <laughs> that is sin. But being a woman, we have to be very careful of being in church work no matter where we go. You know, that a uh, man will flirt with you, you have to be careful of that. If you feel that admiration, oh boy, he flirted with me. Oh, that man, I wonder if he made me feel so good today. Because so and so noticed me. He noticed my hair. He told me my hair looked good. Or something like that. We have to be careful of our flesh, of that dead thing that we carry around. And all of us as, as women have faced that before. You know, had a in the Lord and she was a minister and she came to me and she told me, she said, when I was very young, there was a young man uh, that wanted counseling. Now she was a minister and she said I found that his attraction to me was very personal and so I, I just uh, turned him over to someone else quickly. <laughs> and that happens in church work and as you are witnessing or trying to help someone and don't ever meet someone alone. And don't ever counsel anyone alone. If someone wants help, you need to be doing it by two. And even women with women, we can't get over attached to where we get so emotionally involved. We are, we are of the gospel of Jesus Christ, women, and we are to help one another. And we are to nurture one another. But we have to be careful that it becomes a carnal friendship. 
and that it's just not about the gospel and that we become so dependent and it's so easy and i was single for many many years and stephen's mother she was wonderful to me and she was my dearest friend and then later on she became my mother-in-law my best friend became my mother-in-law and her and i were really good friends and she was there for me with that being said and she was wonderful she was uh ordained and she was a mature woman of god she didn't lead me we didn't talk about goofy stuff you have to be very careful women of god that you keep your place in christ and the holy ghost will help you to feel checked about who you are in the lord because it is easy to fall into sexual immorality it truly is you know because we're women and god has made us beautiful and that god has made us loving and kind and we have to be careful that we stay in the love of god and there we are used by him and not by our flesh impurity we want to be pure we want to be holy in the lord thy god by reading our bible by staying chaste in the lord and that our passions are not overwhelmed and i know we've been talking about this we're getting ready to close here in a little bit but that our passions are directed by the holy ghost and that we're not doing things to be noticed uh, and we're not being too flamboyant and that we are staying holy and that we are staying chaste within our families and trying to help our families because the lord put us in that family and for myself my family was never easy i have many in my family that had special needs my brother davis went on to be with the lord and our family always had to help him you know and so i always had to make sure that my desires were for to help the poor and i got to help my brother and i thank the lord for that because my brother was on the streets he was on the streets i think for 20 years something like that or over 15 years i don't know and he would come to my house when he would get desperate and uh he would knock on the door i always had a bag of food ready for him and when I see somebody that's hurting, I have always thought, well, that could be my family member. But irregardless, it was somebody's child. When you see that person that is hurting, that was someone's baby that was raised and that was loved. No matter what you think of them today, no matter how they may look or appear or their life, that was someone's child. So we have to direct our passions in the Lord and our lusts that come against us. It's really good. You write yourself a private note about your lusts and your evil desires. What a hard message. <laughs> and your evil desires, because we have evil desires. Take yourself and say, okay, today I'm a Christian. And someone in, this happened, someone in Ireland um, died, and they were my eighth cousin removed, and they had left me all of their money. And so today I am leaving Thunder Hill, and I am going to Ireland to live in this castle. Believe it, there are things like this that do happen when they trace um, inheritance. Okay, so you're going there, and you become a millionaire. And millionaires, believe you me, I know some. They eat whatever they want to eat. <laughs> every day. Every meal. They wear whatever they want to wear. Every day. Three times a day if they want to. They drive whatever they want to drive. So today I'll take you, Sister Kim, and I'll move you to Ireland. But you have to go there. And you have to be a part of that estate for one year before you get the money. So one year you are in the world. So you have the choice if you're gonna take this inheritance and leave the work of God that God has placed you here. Just remember. <laughs> Pretty cool, isn't it? There's movies that that actually does happen, but it happens in, in real life. So I think that if you think about yourself 
And you put yourself in that circumstance. I put myself in that circumstance by thinking about it. I don't know. I thought. Did you hear one year? To get the money. Would you leave? To get the money. Let's just say in the will it says, and you can't take anybody with you. You have to go there by yourself. You actually would find what your evil desires would be. Let them hear you. Just put it on the mic. There are there is a reason God won't let people have a lot of money. It's because people will use that for evil. They'll turn away from God. Amen, sister. Amen. And then there's some that he blesses, and they're able to take that money, and they're able to look at it, and they're able to pour it into the kingdom of God. But no matter who we are, we have to know where our evil desires are and our covetousness. We have to be careful about covetedness. I think that's a very strong one for people. Because we can covet so easy. You know. Well, not too long ago, someone came and told me someone had bought a vehicle and another person was mad at them, you know, in their family, because they had bought a vehicle because they didn't get a vehicle. We're funny, aren't we? <laughs> Those things happen. That is reality. We should never covet. We have to get out of that. So we have to watch ourselves so that we're not carrying around this dead thing, <laughs> and let, which is our flesh, and letting our flesh act out, stand out. So only through the grace of God and through Jesus Christ can we overcome those things. So because the devil, he will put things in front of us, and we can blame. And this paper is really good. The devil made me do it. We can blame the devil for a lot of things. But we have to take responsibility for ourselves. So today I thank the Lord for the message. It is a hard message, but it is the truth. We have to take responsibility for ourselves. No one else is going to take responsibility for us. We have to do it with our relationship with Jesus Christ. And thank God for Jesus Christ, for his love and his mercy and his endurance. He has endured for me for a long time. And he's endured with each one of you for a long time because he is a patient, loving, and kind Jesus. Ever with us and never leaving us and giving us the strength. We cannot overcome the devil made me do it on our, on our own. We can only do that through Jesus Christ. So I thank him and I appreciate him. Anybody else have a word they want to go ahead and say before we go ahead and close? I have a prayer request. Yes, for family in prayer. And the Johnson. And the Johnson family. We had a loss in their family, so we praying for them. Anybody else have a have a prayer request? I know we have the prayer request posted back there on the wall, and we have the prayer request uh, from Laredo also. I did have one more thought before I close. I want to obey the Lord. Uh, I was talking to Pastor Randy about this, and he mentioned that we live, we have to be careful in this day and hour of narcissism. And I think this message, take it, take it home with you. Stick it in your Bible so you will never forget. All right, that's the one I wrote on there, and I forgot to mention that narcissism. We live in a society of narcissism that what benefits me and what and we have to be careful of that as Christians because we might look at something, well, let's just say somebody needs help, but we, we have money, but we don't really have the money for that. Or they need help. We really don't have the space or the time for that because we live in a narcissistic society because the world and the devil teaches us all about that everything is important to us. We have to look at other people and say what is important for them. You know, even getting up out of our seats and greeting one another, it's important for them because we can be narcissistic. Well, I really don't want to get out of my seat, and I really don't feel like greeting anybody this evening. That's why Pastor Stu hates padded pews. He likes it where the pews, everybody gets up out of their seat. 
But we're living in this narcissistic uh, society. And even when it comes to our children, uh, adults have to be very careful because the world, oh, the world is so powerful. Can you imagine what the world's going to be like 50 years from now? Yeah, if there is one. I pray Jesus comes, sister. Yes, amen. I pray he does come and Lord come quickly. But if the society is here with the way that it's going, it is so narcissistic, you know, it's about me and there's just so much going on and then the routine, you know, of coming home from work and having a drink and many people are into that and that drink, you know, it's just for relax you and, and all that stuff of the devil and the world and making people in the world feel so good, and, you know, because you can get this from them and that from them and everything. We have to be rooted in Jesus Christ and thank the Lord. When we're rooted in Jesus Christ, we are truly rooted in him and his roots are deep. And he will help us and he will lead us. And we can look back uh, years from now and we can see good things. No matter how hard it is for us. I have a sister in the Lord that I worked with at the nursing home. Um, and I loved her. But every day she looked so forward to seeing me. When I was young, I knew she wanted me to work with her. And I liked to work really fast because I could get done. I could drive the blood pressure cuff and I'd go through and do all the blood pressures. Write them down, have all that done, go through and make my bed, lickety split. <laughs> I was fast. And uh, go through and get my showers done. But she wanted to work with me, which was buddy, which made double work. And at that time, she was not a Christian. She had no professional faith. And uh, so she would want to work with me. And every day I'd have to pray, oh Lord, is there anything you can get her to do? <laughs> Besides being my buddy today. <laughs> but no, he did not. He wanted me working with her. I worked with her for years. Uh, not like two, I don't know how many. Maybe seven years, ten years I worked with her. And as time went by, I loved her so much. I talked to her about the Lord. She always wanted to be around me because I talked to her about the Lord, but I never heard of a commitment from her. Later on, in years, I was married with Mary Pastor Steve and went to a church from you too. And her baby girl was there, who was the woman there. And she saw me and she grabbed me and she started hollering and she hugged me and she said, Margaret, I wanted you to know that Mama went on to be the Lord and she told me the, the time and the day and everything. She said, but we never did forget about how you talked about the Lord. And I'm serving the Lord. I'm serving the Lord, and I need church work. So see, we don't know. We don't know what the Lord has in store for us. We don't know the outcome. But my aunt always has to say, Aunt Rhonda, we'll know more about it by and by. She liked to say it so. And the things that we're going through now, we look to the future as we stay rooted in Christ and we stay out of all this sin. And if we get involved in this sin, and we know it's death, and that we know through Jesus Christ we'll get rid of it. And we know that we have a future in him. And that he will work it all out because that's what he does. Because he's our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you all. And you have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.